Good evening everyone and welcome to Sugar and Crumbs. My name is Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes. I have been wrestling with Facebook for the last 10 minutes trying to get myself online and we've now managed it. So I'm sure it's probably something to do with what happened yesterday with Facebook but anyway I have now finally made it. So I do apologise we are 10 minutes late this evening. Once I finally managed to get on it then takes a while to set up all the cameras. So I finally managed it um, and fingers crossed I've got it all right. I've got a few extra screens come up tonight so I'm not entirely sure what I've done. Um, but we'll find out as we go along I'm sure <laughs> hopefully it's okay um, I'm on my own this evening Kelly may appear at some point but she's at work at the moment but I am here on my own so I'm hoping everything is working and I'll see some comments coming up shortly and then I'll know why I'm definitely in the right place but for the moment we'll keep going and we'll discuss what we're going to do this evening so tonight i'm going to be doing a haunted house themed cake so that's the plan so i've already made my haunted house last week we did the board so for those of you that missed last week then you will be able to see um, the board that i did now if you've missed out you can either go back and watch it on sugar and crumbs or you can do it on um uh, you'll be able to watch it on my YouTube channel. Let me put that up here for you. Where are we? There we go. Um, so be able to see it on the YouTube channel there as well. So if you do want to see it, that is where it is. There we go. With some names coming up. That is more reassuring. I actually do know I'm in the right place. <laughs> so we're going to start in a minute with um, the haunted house itself. I'm going to show you everything that I've done with the haunted house. And then I have got my cake behind me, which I'm going to cover and we're going to put the haunted house on it, various characters, decorate it. So it's going to come out like some sort of Halloween scene. That's the plan anyway. There's been a few technical hitch hitches this afternoon, apart from me and Facebook, <laughs> just trying to get online full stop, um, with uh, the patchwork cutters, because obviously I use patchwork cutters to do the embossing. And I made the witch, and the witch has obviously been in my room for a week, so it's been moved to various places. And I went to pick it up this afternoon, and it's sort of disintegrated. So I've had to sort of stick it down, but you'll see that as I go along and as long as she sticks on the haunted house we're going to be fine but if she doesn't then that's another story we'll work that out as we go along so I am on my own this evening so if you have any comments I will try and look at as many comments as I can as I'm going if I miss anything and you want to contact me directly then do go to my website where's that Tracy there it is uh, tracyscakes.co.uk just drop me an email and I'll be more than happy to help you um, with anything that you have any questions about right let's get going so there's quite a lot to do so we're going to do a little bit of painting tonight we're going to be painting on chocolate and then we're going to be putting this big cake together so this little project that we've got going everybody um, so that we started last week so I will show you where we've got to so far I've got cameras everywhere tonight purely because this is a big project and I want you to try and get the best possible view that you can I'm just going to move things around a little bit so we have got shall I just hold this it's probably easier isn't it the board from last week Oh, now I had to do a little bit of prep here. Here we go. Right, I'm going to tip that forward there. So that's the board that I did last week. Now, what I've got on here looks like a huge mound of cake, and it is exactly that. It is a huge mound of cake. Uh, it's actually red velvet. Um, and all I've done, because I was going to carve this live, and I'm so glad I didn't, because one, I'm late, and secondly, it went absolutely everywhere, because red velvet does. But this is red velvet sweet success with ganache over it so it's now staying as one whole piece and it's a very random piece of cake so um, if you're going to do this as a project then literally I just had um, a couple of eight inch square cakes and I just laid it together and then chopped some bits out of it so it looks a little bit like a hill and I've put it actually straight onto my board and if I'm really careful um, then hopefully I should be able to cover that in green because this is going to be our hill um, and any bit that kind of ends up on the board we will put some grass on it if it makes a mistake. So uh, it's a little bit on the dodgy side for me tonight, but it'll be fine. Um, but we're going to be covering that shortly. We're going to paint the haunted house first, because then that gives that an opportunity to dry while we're then covering that. So that kind of makes a bit more sense. So we're going to do all of that bit first. So um, the haunted house I have got here in front of me. Now this is Let's put that on. This is a 3D mould, a 3D chocolate mould. Now, my witch is on the back there, you can see. And there's a bit of kitchen roll just popping it up. Now, the reason that's there is because the haunted house is slightly tilted. Um, and I want the witch to stick on with some royal icing, which I have done. And I've left it there now for about 
two and a half hours so i hope it's set if not we're going to be in trouble but i'm sure it'll be fine so we're going to paint this side of the haunted house so this is my 3d haunted house mold which i also reckon would make a very nice christmas cottage and somebody even suggested to me the other day a fairy cottage so i think this has lots of potential so we're going to have another go at painting it sort of towards christmas time and go for a kind of christmas cottage but for the moment we're going to treat it as if it's a haunted cottage or haunted house and we're going to paint it lying down uh, purely because of the witch that's actually setting on the back there I don't want to upset the witch so we're going to leave her there so that's the patchwork cutter we painted last week and it's on a disc at the back which is like a moon basically um, and she's flying across the moon at the back so it's all stuck with royal icing so there we go let's hope it works so if you're going to paint on chocolate you're going to need cocoa butter and that's what I teach I think a lot of you now know that's what I teach I'm going to put that there so you can see it and um, we're going to be using some dusting colours. This is a chrome food warmer. Neither Carol or myself sell one of these. You have to go to Amazon to get them. But you can just put in like chrome food warmer and it will come up. I'm going to light my candle. There we go. And I'm going to pop my metal paint palette on the top. Let me just give it a quick wipe because I have been painting Christmas all day today. So I <laughs> it still has Christmas colours on it. So let's get rid of those. There we go, and pop that on top there. So this is going to get hot by the heat that comes from underneath there. And that's what we need um, in order to be able to melt the cocoa butter. So cocoa butter, what is it? So it looks like this. Let me show you what it looks like. So that's what it looks like, little buttons. And we're just going to put, we actually do need a fair amount of it because we're painting some of this with luster colours. Um, you'd be surprised actually how much um, it takes. Luster colour seems to take more food colouring than um, matte colours. Matte colours themselves don't seem to take as much. Right, I'm just locating a couple of paintbrushes. I've got one. Where's the other one gone? Hiding somewhere. Oh yeah, they're right next to me. What am I on? Okay, here we go. And then, so we're going to use for this project uh, Wonder Dust. Of course we are. Um, Wonder Dust Regal Purple. And we're going to be using uh, Spring Green. So that's a sugar flare colour and white and black. Those are the two colours that we're going to be using, or three, four colours we're going to be using. So we'll put the purple here to start with. Now I did actually go through quite a bit of this earlier, so I'll have to get myself some more. And then we'll put spring green over here, so we've not got them all on top of each other. And then white. Um, we do have the mould on our website. I don't know if Nick is watching. She's normally very helpful for me when Kelly's not here. <laughs> it's under the Halloween section on my website if anybody wants the Halloween haunted mould. She may do it from home if she's got back home, Kelly. She might suddenly appear. Right, okay. So, we are going to use some of my brushes. Why is it with black dusting colour? I always end up with it all over me. So my paintbrushes are numbered, so that's how I teach using brushes that have got numbers on them. That's two threes. Uh, what else we got here? Paintbrush number two. There you go. And also paintbrush. Now I think paintbrush number one is the one I really want. There we go. And paintbrush number one. So these are the brushes that I'm going to be using tonight, and we are going to get started. So there we go. Can I sit down here? So we just need a little bit of kitchen roll when you're trying to do your painting. So it's very straightforward. Take hold of, what should we use first? We're gonna use paintbrush, I'll tell you what, we we'll use paintbrush three. I'm gonna bring this forward a bit so I can see it. And we're just going to dip that into the cocoa butter like that, pick up some dust, and then just give it a bit of a mix like that. So you're basically just making a bit of a paint here, like so. Now, somebody's put up there something's wrong. So can somebody tell me, please, whether or not Facebook has frozen or if there is a problem? And then I'll know whether I'm still live. <laughs> I think I'm still live. But who knows? It's been a bit of a an uphill climb this evening with trying to get on. So the more cocoa butter you add, the thinner the paint. So if you find that the dusting colour is quite... 
uh, put more dusting colour in to get a thicker paint, which is better coverage, like so. There we go. Now I'm slightly suspicious the feed has gone wrong. If somebody could just write hello or a little Halloween emoji, then I can check that everything is okay. That would be helpful. It shows it's still running, but you never know. I can send me a Halloween ghost. <laughs> And then I know we're all up and running. If not, I will log off and we will have another look at what's going on and see if we can find out what the problem is. Right. OK. That still says it's live. I'm not seeing any feed coming through. So because I can't see any feed, I'm going to just keep going and then hope that everything's OK. And if it's not, then I'm sure we'll sort it out. But I'm going to turn this around so I can see the back of this. So we're going to paint the roof up here in this purple colour. So I'm going to just start now. So this is the purple, what did this one call? Carol called this one, hold on. Regal purple, this one is called. So I'm going to just paint that. Now I can't see my feed coming through, so I don't actually know if I'm still live or any comments are coming through. Everything seems to have frozen at the moment, so I'm not too sure what's happening. So I'm going to keep going for a few minutes and then I'm going to check the feed and see if I can work out why not. You never know. But that's how you do it. So we're going to be painting this onto chocolate, so if you want to paint onto chocolate, then you need to be using uh, cocoa butter because that is what happens or how it sticks to the chocolate. And this purple colour is lovely, as you can see, it's a really nice colour. And this is sugar and crumbs colour here. It's covering the chocolate really, really well. Now, before I go too much further, I'm going to check the feed on this Facebook live because I can't see anything else happening so I'm going to change let me stop for a second right I'm going to come back on screen I'm just going to disconnect this phone for a second now if I go off completely I will come back on again but I can't actually see what's going on so let's take this off what fun this is don't you just love Facebook <laughs> Let's have a little look and see if I'm actually live and the reasons why I can't see anything. I'll probably appear in a minute. <laughs> oh, what's happening? Let's have a little look, see if I'm still live. Oh, it's all good. Kelly's online. Right, Kelly is now messaging me, which is perfect. So, Kelly, I can't see the feed anymore. It's stopped feeding. So, can you please answer any of the feed questions. I'm so sorry everybody, I can't actually see any feed at the moment, it's all gone very quiet, so let me just have a little check. Oh yeah, there I am, I'm still there. Okay, we'll carry on. <laughs> oh, the test of this, I'm getting too old for this, I think. Right, let's get everything back and running again. So, and it's frozen at the moment, but Kelly is going to keep an eye on it for me. I'm just gonna add another camera, just bear with me a second. Right, let me put that one back on, okay. You're going to have to look at my ceiling temporarily. Oh, no, is it going to just do it itself? Hold on. Oh, that might help if I allow permission for this, honestly. This is why it takes so long to set the cameras up. There we go. Let's see where we are. Where am I? That camera there. Oh, it's upside down. All right, let's turn it round. Oh, I think we're back in business again. Right, sorry about that, everybody. But I can't actually see the comments, but Kelly can. So Kelly's going to deal with them. There we go. OK, I'm just going to carry on chatting away to myself and Kelly will answer any of your questions because she's now watching from home. Right, okay, so let's continue. <laughs> I'll carry on painting, here we go. So you can see the lovely colour that there is on there. Oh dear. I'm just gonna say, Kelly, now, if there's anything goes wrong with this feed, if you text me, I can actually see it coming up on my screen, Kelly. So if anything else goes wrong, let me know. Other than that, let's get painting. So we're just going to paint this roof, this gorgeous regal purple colour, which as you can see is going on really nicely. Look at that. Isn't that fabulous? There we go. It's 
brilliant coverage and it looks really really nice I think it's a lovely Halloween colour and something a bit different so I'm going to just chat away to myself because I say I can't see any of the feed <laughs> it's all frozen so it's me talking to myself so if you have any questions Kelly I'm sure will try and help you and I will sit and paint all of a sudden I'll get a whole load of questions coming through and then I, I won't be able to read them all very quickly so so we think well Kelly and I think that this cake um, or this particular mold the lovely haunted house mold will make also very nice Christmas cottage and also a very nice fairy castle so that's what we're going to do with it we're going to paint it several different ways over the next few weeks so that you can see it done in a few different way so I think it's lovely it's quite big actually I didn't measure it did I hold on it's actually my cake top and my cake topper for tonight oh there's my tape measure there we go everyone loves the colour Kelly's now texting me messages thank you Kelly <laughs> oh dear right so we have got um oh this is upside down I'm off the camera let's go back on the camera a bit here so this is approximately seven inches it's quite big and uh, by six inches it's a two-part mold um I just put the chocolate in swirled it around and left it joined together to fix um as one piece um if anyone wants to know how much chocolate it takes um it's approximately 450 grams or less um, not a lot less but 450 grams is what I did it with it's made it quite a big substantial piece if you wanted to fill it with sweets and stuff you could do that if you particularly wanted to but I just wanted to do it as one um, it's not solid oh that's not 450 grams of solid chocolate that's just 450 grams of chocolate okay so okay I know that you can see now so I'm just going to carry on and paint paint away there we go right so that's the roof now we've also got on this I'm turning this around um, other aspects of the roof actually no I don't sorry about that I'm going to turn it back around again um, we are going to paint this part of the roof here because there's a little bit of the roof here that's at the front so let's paint that as well there we go so that will also match it's very posh this haunted house isn't it and then we'll go this way paint that along there as well like so now I've already painted the back of this this afternoon because I wanted to test the colors so this is actually a double-sided mold I won't need to paint the back because it's already done um, so just bear that in mind when you come to paint it, it does actually take a little bit of time but if you've got to do both sides, then um, just bear, just um, allow yourself a bit of extra time. It is a lovely mould to paint this one, I have to say. I do really like it. Um, right, where have we got to? Let's do the windows. So what I did with the windows, because we have to match the back, um, I'm going to switch over to paintbrush one because it's got less, um, it's, it's a smaller brush. Let me bring this back in again so you can see what's going on. And we have got black colouring here. There we go. And all I'm going to do is just paint the inside of the windows. So just these bits in here. So I'm not intending to paint this whole mould. I'm intending to let the chocolate um, be the base of the house. And it's just the painting of the other bits and pieces that we're done. So we're just adding highlights really, I guess. So just do that. Does that look okay? Let me have a look up on screen. Yeah, that's better. And then we've got another long window here. So the back and the front are different. That's why I'm sort of pausing and going, oh yes, there's a window over there because they are different. All I did with the back um, earlier was just set it up so I knew what colours to do for the front. Um, but they are a different layout. So I suppose you could pick whichever side you prefer really because they've both got doors. So if you actually prefer the look of the other side, you could use that, couldn't you? doesn't really matter so we'll paint is my hand in the way no my hand is okay and then we'll do that how are we doing yeah okay this 
so just paint these windows just this this is just black dusting color mixed with cocoa butter and then you'll find there's because this got like little turrets and things on it there are oh god i forgot about the witch didn't i i knew i was going to do that yeah i forgot about the witch okay your witch is going to fall off now right i'm going to take you off i had it all stuck to the back <laughs> but i've moved it now the witch has come off never mind we'll stick her on later on in a different way should have been stuck on with chocolate i think really right so what we'll do here is we'll just paint the insides of these ones here I think that witch was doomed. We'll get her on somehow. Okay, and then if you tip it a bit further, you'll see another little set of windows here. It's actually one I've missed on the back there. I'll just do that. It's got windows everywhere, this thing. All right, and then another one there. So there's a lot of detail in this mold for sure. Okay, so that's that there. Sorry, I've just gone off screen tiny a little bit. Let's move it over a little bit more. Um, the reason I'm using kitchen roll, apart from obviously trying to prop the witch up, that went a bit wrong, um, is because it's chocolate. I don't want to be holding it because my hands are hot and I don't want to touch it and melt it. So that's why I've got, you can use cotton gloves if you've got things like that, if you're getting posh, but if you haven't, just a little bit of kitchen roll is fine, but don't hold on to it because you'll melt it. So just... Use a bit of kitchen roll to hold it. Yeah, I think people forget they've got heat in their hands and then before they know it, they've melted it. Okay, there we go. Right, so that's all the windows. Yes, we've done them all. Uh, while we've still got black on our brush, we will paint the door. Oh, I've got a little bit of a feed coming back. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> I've missed everything. It suddenly went, -a 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 -a. there's a huge feed come through. So I just looked up and saw it change. So thank goodness for that. Okay. So we're going to paint the front door. We'll do that black as well. We're going to do something completely different with the window frames because I think the natural thought is to probably just do them black, but we're not. We're going to do them green, and make them stand out. There's the door. It's got nice check texture to this as well. It's like a little bit of sort of wood or something going on here. It's very nice. There we go. And actually, while I'm here, I'm going to just do this porch bit here, going across the front door, like that. And that way. There we go. What does that look like? Hmm, that's better. Princess Castle, yeah. Oh yeah, it's Kelly. Is that what you want for your birthday, is it? Princess Haunted House Castle. Okay, all right. Got a very shiny roof anyway, haven't we? Perfect, okay. Ooh, one more thing while I've still got black on here. So these discs here um, have got a bit of a pattern on them. Um, I'm just gonna paint them in. Actually, the back ones were clearer than the front ones, but we'll just put in a little, I don't really think it's anything particularly significant. It's just a little, um, sort of not flower I don't really know what that is but anyway I'll just do the same on here as I did on the back so that it makes more sense I say you don't have to paint the back if you don't want to I've done mine already there you go lovely um, just a little bit more in there it's gone a bit grey I'm going to tip it back a bit because the light's tipping towards me. There we go. I can just see what's going on. I think you've got a better view than me at the moment. <laughs> That's all right though, isn't it? Right, so let's paint the window frames. So we're going to still use paintbrush number one. I'm just going to clean it. So I'm just going to dip it in the cocoa butter and clean off all the paint. 
and then we're going to pick up some spring green now I'm going to put a bit of white in it just to lighten it up a bit okay so just a little bit of white dusting colour like so there we go right where should we start so let's start on the side shall we so let's just make sure I've got this kitchen roll on here so if we turn it like that I've actually got another window there I missed earlier so let's just put that in and we'll paint our window frames bright green I might breathe occasionally. You don't have to be too precise with this either. I mean, be as tidy as you can. You'd probably be more tidy than me because you're not doing it live and in a rush. <laughs> but um, don't forget, it's a haunted house, so we don't want it to be too perfect, do we? But if you wanted to do this as a project, so if you wanted to kind of make a haunted house or you're going to make a haunted house theme sort of scene thing we've got going on, then you could easily just sit and paint this one evening and then you could really take your time over it and spend a bit of, you know, have a bit of thought about where you want to put things. There's all sorts of things you could do with this. So I'll bring that down here. And across here. How's that looking? That's okay. And then on to this one. What I found when I painted this earlier today is that once all those green windows are on, it really makes it stand out. So don't forget, if you're painting on chocolate, you do need to use cocoa butter. Don't use um, dusting colours with things like vodka and stuff because it doesn't work. They just fall off. You'll, you'll be able to paint it, but then the minute you touch it, it will just come off. So in order to get it to stick, there we go, that's better. Um, you do need to be using cocoa butter. I think my feed has stopped again, so I can't unfortunately answer any questions at the moment, but I'm hoping Kelly's there doing it for me. I think it depends which way the wind's blowing tonight. <laughs> With all the aggravation with Facebook yesterday, I think it's still catching up, maybe, I don't know. There we go. Right, let's move over here. And a little bit that way. So cocoa butter takes approximately one or two minutes to dry, depending on how warm it is. So if it's in the summer, it takes longer. If it's in the winter, it's usually quite quick. Um, because it's quite cold so just bear that in mind if you're doing any painting in the summer you have to make some allowances you just have to wait a bit longer for it to dry and you have to look after it it's a bit like well it's sort of chocolate based so you want to bear in mind you don't want to be leaving it in the heat anywhere how are we doing yeah right oh I've got windows on the side here okay let's turn that round you can still see good I hope you're all chatting away to each other tonight. I'm sorry I can't I can't interact with you. I'm afraid because I don't know why. Ah it's a pain, never mind. As long as you're enjoying yourselves watching this, that's fine. And we'll keep going. So you can see we're going to use the chocolate as the main colour of this building. But as with everything, as I always go on about, it's going to be those final details that make all the difference with this. So it's not just paint the windows and there you go. We're obviously going to do a little bit more to it to make it um, better, I guess. Okay, right, we'll go this way. It's when you feel like the windows are never ending. I'd say it's like when you're cleaning the windows, but there we go. Okay. 
How are we doing? Yeah, we'll bring it back in a bit. I'm going off screen a bit. I think I might leave the witch off tonight because I think I'm going to struggle to get it to stick but we'll see we'll see how we go see how my mountain goes first or my, my hill of cake this cake is actually off to um it's going to Macmillan tomorrow oh no it's not in Rennie I beg your pardon it's going to the in Rennie nurses they're coming to collect it tomorrow so no pressure I've got to finish it <laughs> I'm going to be here until it's finished Right, and then just this one here I've missed. I think I've missed this one completely. I don't even think I've finished the middle bit properly. There we go. Okay, right. Let's put that back down again. So I'm just now going to go back and just um fill in the bits that I've missed because once you put those window frames in you can kind of see where you've missed so I need to go back and just do these bits here up the side that's better just down the side of the windows it just needs to be painted otherwise I can just see chocolate on that bit and I don't really want to see that okay and this one here how are we doing with it yeah that's looking all right still can't see my feed so <laughs> oh dear I'm doing this in the dark a bit today a little bit round here definitely a bit round there I don't know what I was doing there right let's tip this this way go back in and tidy it up a bit as I say if you do this at home I'm sure you'll spend much more time on it than me and do a better job okay I think we're done with that bit right now what did I do next? That's a very good question. I then, I kept this paintbrush on and I went back with the black. And what I did then is I went round the underside of the house. So I went down here. My own camera, I've got to never check. Let me move it over here. So I went a single line under the eaves. And then I went this way. Like that. And then I went under the beam bit here. And then I went down the side here. Now this is all quite obvious um, when you come to paint it. I'm just going to move this out of the way. But this is quite obvious when you come to paint it because you'll be able to see it. Um, I'm not... No, this is nothing that you won't be able to work out for yourself. You will be able to see the lines and where you need to go. I just found by doing this, it, it kind of just enhanced it. I can't quite describe why it did it, but it did. It just, I just thought it looked, made it look so much better. And then we're going to go around the outside edge of the window frames. Just be careful with this bit. Just again, just use the point of your brush. like so let's turn that round so 
all these little details that make the difference. And down the side. I'm just going to put um, a line under here as well, down this side. Under there, we get hold of it. So under that side. It's a bit wobbly that line, but it doesn't matter. Okay, let's put you back down again. And then we'll come under here. So under that beam, under the eaves. side. I hope you like this anyway. I can't tell because <laughs> I can't see anything. Oh dear. Go. And down the side of the door. And along there. Another little bit over here. That actually goes nicely down the side of that window frame as well, so that's quite handy. So we don't have to do that twice. Good oh. So we'll just go across there. Like so. then down here this actually tidies up your green as well so if you've made um if it's not quite equal the black will tidy it up a little bit for you like that how are we doing let's have a look There's a little step there as well. We could always paint that black if we wanted to, couldn't we? I might just leave that. Actually, I don't think I will paint that black. Just tidy that up a little bit. How are we going? Ah, it's not looking too bad, is it? Right, so let's do these side windows. Let's tip it on its side, bring it back in a bit. Um, we've also got a nice big reveal under there. Let's do that. So let's paint this bit here. So we'll paint under the, under the turret. I know exactly what will happen when I put this on the cake. I will be back out with my paint brushes going, oh, I've missed a bit, oh, missed another bit. So I wouldn't put your paints too far when you come to put this on your cake. I'd keep them around. There you go. So I've just missed a bit on the other side. See? So when you look at it from a million different angles, you can see what you've missed. It's a very nice roof though, when we all like a nice purple sparkly roof. Okay. So as with everything with painting is just get your paint on and then you can always go back and fiddle around with it and make it perfect if that's what you need to do. Um, you can make a mistake with chocolate if you've got a scriber, by a scriber I mean one of these, um, oh, that one's all coated in royal icing so I've been doing royal icing all day, like a sort of, well it says pin isn't it, it looks like a pin, 
um, then you can scratch it off. So you can take that and scratch off any colour that's in the wrong place. That's quite a good tip. Obviously, you can't scratch off great big chunks of it, but if you've made a mistake, um, you can just scratch it off. That's quite good. Let's just turn that window a little bit. There we go. Down this side. All right, one more, one more window. Oh. And then what have we got here? Move it down this side and across the bottom. Maybe a bit across here as well. I'm not sure what's going on there, but that seems to work. <laughs> right, okay. Now, on the chimney, there is little markings here. So all I'm going to do is just go across here and just sort of fill in the brickwork a little bit. So I'll just turn that again. I've got to be careful. I don't. So I'm just going to. So remember, I'm not doing this, you know, as in I'm not make, making this up. It is here. Just put the brickwork in. Happy days. There we go. All right. Right, I'm just going to inspect my roof and see what I've got. Do I need to do anything else? So I can stand it up and have a look at it because it's 3D, obviously. You can see the royal icing on the back here where I had the witch and now the witch is no longer there because she fell off. So we'll either find a different way of attaching her or leave her off tonight, one or the other. A little bit of royal icing on there, I'll just take that off. You can tell I've been doing royal icing today. Right, okay. So I'm just going to do one more thing. With the purple. Let's take the purple colour. Just paint the front side of this just so we get a nice view of the purple from the front as well. Like a very nice Cadbury's purple colour, isn't it? And it's got a bit of a shimmer about it because it's um, luster colour. So this is, for those of you who have joined, it's called Regal Purple, this one. It's a sugar and crumbs colour. Oh, got a bit of extra roof there, you see. I knew I'd forget something. Yeah, this is called Regal Purple. And then we'll do that bit there. That makes me happy. Okay, let's have a look. Quick inspection, let's see if I missed anything. No, nope, might just go once more, quick tidy up on the windows and then we can get ready to do the cake and then we can get it all assembled. It's like we've been building towards this, isn't it? Yeah, we're just going to go over these windows once more. So when you apply a second layer of cocoa butter, um, one, it's a lot quicker because you're not trying to cover everything, but also it gets um, it gives you complete coverage near enough then of what you did before. It's tidying it up quite nicely for me. So and it's much quicker. So don't suddenly think, oh no, she's painting those window frames again. It's going to take forever. It won't. It'll be really quick. Oh, I know, I've forgotten now. I knew I was going to forget something on here. Right, we're going to paint some cobwebs, that's what we're going to do. Can't have a haunted house without some cobwebs, can we? So we'll get those on in a second. 
Okay, let's do that. So haunted house cobwebs, um, we're going to do them in a very pale grey. So I'm going to just take, oh, I'm going to get this green out of my brush first. I'm still using brush number one. If you wanted to go to zero, which is a smaller brush you can do for that. It just depends on how you feel about it. Um, we'll pick up some white. Give that a bit of a mix here. And then a very tiny bit of black. So if you just literally dip your brush in it and bring it over. I might need to dip it in a bit more. Just want kind of a like silvery colour, I guess. Nothing too. Now, where to put the cobwebs? That's a very good question, isn't it? Because I've already done the other side. So let's put one here. So we're just going to do lines coming out here. So we'll do one there. And then we'll come down this side. Can you see okay? Yes, you can. And then we'll bring that out like that. So it's going to go over the window frame, but that's all right. Like that. And then we'll join it up. So we'll just do some like that. And go back that way. And one more. There we go, that looks good. Right, we need another one. Let's do another one up here, shall we? Right, let's go this way. So you can see what I mean about customization with this. So um, it's a haunted house, we're gonna put some cobwebs on it. Um, if it's a Christmas house, well, we'll be thinking about that next week. So I've got about five of these made up, ready to be painted. See what we can come up with. But it is listed on my website as haunted house. But as I say, I think it will have other other ideas with that. Okay, make sure that your um, pa your painting is dry before you paint over with white, because otherwise you'll end up with the same colours. What's underneath? that doing oh lovely i'm chatting away to myself <laughs> going that's nice i don't know whether you think it's nice but i do <laughs> let's put a little one over the door a little mini one shall we a little tiny one no one's been in for years that lovely okay I think you could keep going with cobwebs but I think we won't go for overkill on cobwebs I think that's enough I think that indicates what we know what it is now doesn't it I think that's enough right so we're going to leave that to dry I'm not going to get rid of my um paint palette I will blow out the candle though because otherwise I'll forget and we'll put this to one side somewhere Let's go and have a little look over there and see what I can find. Right, put it somewhere. Oh, there's no space. Right, let's put it over here. Right, so we're going to leave that to dry. And then I'm going to put my witch somewhere as well. I'm not sure if we're going to use her now. It depends on whether we can rescue her or not. So I'm going to put that over there. I might stick on with a bit of chocolate at the end. We'll see how we go for timing. And then we'll just move these cocoa butters out of the way. Put that behind me. <sighs> right. <laughs> Could do the cake now. So we're now going to... Um, I'm pointing because it's there. That's our cake. We're going to dye the sugar paste first. We're going to do a nice grass colour. So we're going to mix some sugar paste but with some gel colour. We're going to use... Um, what did I do with it? There it is. Uh, leaf colour splash leaf my favourite colour in fact this is a new one 
no it's not I was thinking I had to cut the end off and we're going to mix that through but we're not going to mix it completely so that it looks like um it looks more like grass um if you kind of just leave it semi semi melted semi mixed <laughs> then it looks a little bit more like grass that's the plan anyway um paste wise I'm still on satinara at the moment I go through phases this is the phase we're on at the moment is satinara so when you're going to do your haunted house cake um just make a hill of cake and you really don't need any skills to make a hill of cake you just bake some cakes you stack them up you chop them about a bit that's literally what I've done and coat them in ganache and that's it it's all ready to go so it's nothing complicated I haven't done anything strange um, it's very straightforward <laughs> um, now I'm actually going to color up a fair amount of green because I need green tomorrow morning so I've got a, I've got a tennis cake to do tomorrow morning so I actually don't mind if I end up with too much green that is okay so this is 2.5 kilos I've probably done two we'll see how we go in a minute see what it looks like let's go on to the other camera right so there we go you'll probably get shaken a bit here while I'm kneading this through just bear with it let's give it a bit of a knead to get it going right it's quite soft satinara I find it's quite soft anyway I quite like it I wouldn't use it on wedding cakes, I have to admit. I would be still using Massa, but I do quite like this. I think it's perfectly acceptable. There's red velvet in it, though. <laughs> right, that's OK. Let's get some colour splash in it. I want the grass fairly dark, so we're going to put a load in. There we go. Ooh, lots of colour splash. There we go, a bit more. Right. Off we go see how green my hands are going to get because I normally end up with it all over me I'm going to keep folding it in you're not going to get me <laughs> I know you will right don't you get me I've already had my hands covered in black dusting colour today am I going to get away with it I think so so I've made it quite strong because I want it to be quite dark. I don't want it to look like, you know, um, I would say family friendly Halloween, this one. <laughs> so it's not all sort of dark and haunted and horrid. It's quite family friendly. There we go. Right. You can see some of the green coming through. And what we'll do is we'll get it to a point where it's almost mixed. This is why I did this live rather than beforehand. See if we can get it to do what I need it to do. You see it's got a bit of a texture colour about it. See, I quite like that. It's a little bit sort of mottled. I would like it a bit darker though, so we're going to add some more. Stand by. So it's quite a large amount of sugar paste, so we need a little bit more. That'll probably have to be it, because I don't know if I've got any more of that. I'm not here anyway. Ah, I've got a little bit on me, I knew it would happen. Oh, there's some coming through. So we'll just take our time. A big streak of it there look <laughs> that's nice that's lovely that's what we want that is perfect can you see that lovely grass color look at that just roll it out like that whatever you do don't go any further than that perfect right uh icing sugar now i filled that up this afternoon so that's what that is um, before I do that, actually, I'm going to need, let's come back on screen here, my cake over there is going to need some ganache, which has got ganache on it, it's going to need water on it. So I'm going to just swap that for that. Oh, turntable. I've just spotted it. How lovely. 
how organised of me. <laughs> that doesn't happen, does it? Not normally. I'm normally rummaging around looking for stuff. Right. Let's put that over there. Just move everything out of the way. There we go, so you can see properly. Right, let's go on to this camera. There's my mountain. Now, what I need to be careful of is not getting water all over my lovely board that I painted the other week, so I don't want to be doing that. I'm going to just put that on there as a precaution. It's just a little bit of kitchen roll just to protect it. And I didn't actually put some of this on that long ago. So I think the ganache, oh no, it has set. I wasn't sure if it would set or not. I don't want any water on my lovely board, so I need to protect it. So this is Sweet Success Red Velvet. It's very nice, but it's very soft. And that often means that it can be quite difficult to deal with. It's the only one I find quite tricky, actually. Let's take that little bit out of the way. So I'm just trying to catch any water that's likely to end up on my beautiful board. But if it does, I'm going to be putting a little bit of grass there. <laughs> All right, let's go around this side. I still can't see my feet. I'm so sorry. You could be saying anything about me tonight. <laughs> like, wait, no. Here. Yeah, I was going from one thing to the other this afternoon, so I was painting Christmas this afternoon and royal icing at the same time, which sounds like a plan, doesn't it? Except that my hands were getting covered in dusting colour, and then it was I have to keep scrubbing them in between while I was trying to film the royal icing, so it was a bit of a nightmare to be honest. What should have been one of my better ideas was not. <laughs> Right, okay, we're nearly there. Well, we're there as far as we think it's going to go anyway. That's enough. It's all this little red cake everywhere. It's red velvet. Ugh. Okay, right, let's leave that there. Let's go back to rolling out that paste. I'm going to put you over there for a second. Okay, let's go back onto the other camera. I love this colour. See, this is perfect grass as far as I'm concerned. Unless, of course, I roll it out in a minute and it's got a big streak of green in it and then I might change my mind. <laughs> we'll run with it. Okay. And if it hasn't, I'm going to enhance it further with some cocoa butter if I need to and that may happen as well so it's quite a big bit of um, to roll out I don't know how big this cake is I'll measure it in a minute when I've done it I will let you know Got on the other side oh look at that <laughs> there's a lot going on underneath look look at that actually shall I flip it over now I won't because it's got broken bits underneath and I don't want that we'll stick with what we're doing there's plenty of streaks in there still Or enough streaks for what we need it to do anyway. Right. I haven't got my pink board out because I've been using cocoa butter and I have this living fear that I'm going to accidentally burn it one day with the candles. So <laughs> that's why I am rolling out on my table because I have more confidence in that. It's good to me, I like. 
let's go on to this camera here right now tricky moment here so I need this to start here and we'll take the excess off the back I'm pretty certain I've got more than enough so we're going to start that chuck it over the top oh, that worked so we want lumps and bumps and hills and lovely things so that's what we're going to do so not a lot of smoothers involved here I did make a bit of a path here as well would you believe it <laughs> and it doesn't look like it what I did right so let's get down to the bottom here so we're going straight on to our lovely posh board so we do need to be a little bit careful what we're doing seem to be okay at the moment a little bit of excess to cut off but nothing too dire at the moment I'm just going to get hold of my smedger give, oh that's got water on it that's helpful I was doing well up to that point all right let's move that back a bit so you can see so we're just going to push that down actually I'm going to pull it out and push it down there's a bit of red velvet loose under there but yeah just when you're doing a funny shape I'm only going to describe this as a funny shape just use the back of your hand just to kind of push it into all the gaps and boy this is a funny shape that's where our haunted house is going to sit up there where are we down the bottom turn it around right I'm gonna give it a big spin so we can get to here so we're going to have some excess but we're going to push that to the back you see so we can then cut that off around here which kind of protects our lovely board because we don't want that damaged I'm going to just take that back a little bit away from my bat and pinch that off because it doesn't actually matter with this bit you're going to see why in a minute so we've got a bit of a ridge there we've got another ridge there that I put in so let's make sure we can see those actually because this is red velvet as well you can manipulate it you can kind of feel it moving underneath this a bit of a path there that's where the edge is I think we'll cut it from there let's do it with a plastic side scraper let's not do it with a knife I literally need one. Let's go and find one. <laughs> Cut this bit off here around the bottom. So if I'm careful, hopefully, yep, I haven't cut into my board because I don't want to do that. So your plastic side scrape is quite good for kind of just pushing things back a little bit without actually having to get your fingers in there. I'm actually just going to slice that bit off there and push that back. Yes, lovely. That screams hill, doesn't it? <laughs> I still can't see your feed, you know, so I could be saying anything. <laughs> Let's put a few more dents in our hill. As I say, this is done with red velvet, so you can kind of push it around a little bit. Let's put a few more in for luck. So we can cut the majority off the back because then we won't end up damaging this board. After all that work we went to last week, that's the last thing I want to do. So use our plastic side scraper. That also does half the damage that a knife will do. There we go. Let's get a feel for where we are. You just don't need to be that neat because it's a it's a um, it's a hill. So you can do whatever you like really. I'm gonna cut that bit off there though. And then regret it because it's not going to stick. <laughs> there we go. I think that's a very nice hill shape. I'm happy with that. A 
that's gone on very well. The Satinara has behaved. We have a path. I haven't damaged my cake board. 10 out of 10. I think I should become a cake decorator. <laughs> right, okay. So next thing we're going to do, we are going to put some... Actually, I think what we'll do is we'll put some grass on it. So let me get out some tracks. I know somebody mentioned tracks a minute ago. So we're going to put a few little grassy bits on here and there. I also want to get that. I'm not going to put the haunted house on until last or, or near enough last um, in case it decides to fall off. I'm going to use one of these, which is a sugar craft gun. I'll just bring that up onto screen so you can see it. Um, you unscrew the end like that and it has lots of little attachments in there. This one that's in there at the moment is grass. So that's the one we're going to be using. Um, I also find you need a scriber for this. So something like this. This is what I was talking about earlier. Actually, I found one now um, to be able to do grass. So we can do this with sugar paste. We'll do it with the same colour as what we've got going on here. And what you'll need to do is take hold of some Trex. So Trex is white fat, I guess. And then if you just pop it into there and knead it in. Now, this is just a little bit of decoration, OK? So don't sort of go, oh, why would you eat that? It's just a little bit of decoration. What this does is it softens up the sugar paste so that you can actually put it through the sugar craft gun because otherwise you're not going to be able to put it through. Um, if you try and put sugar paste through a sugar craft gun without any treks in it, you will break it. It's as simple as that. It's very easy to break. So putting in a little bit of Trex is really important. And this is all of the um, green I'm going to use. Just this little bit here just to do some grass. It goes quite a long way and it just makes it very stretchy. So you can see what it's like. So we will take hold of some and we're going to pop it into the gun. So you're just going to roll it into a sausage shape and take hold of the oh it's probably a bit thinner so we can actually get it in there take hold of that just drop it into the barrel put it in like that that'll do for the moment take hold of this and pop that on the end that pushes down screw that on we like that Push that down as far as it will go. Turn it upside down. I find that's the easiest way to do it. And then you'll see your grass coming out there. And you're going to use the handle here to be able to push the grass through. Can you see that coming through? OK, now what I normally do is I take hold of some water and a brush, a brush that's not huge, hopefully, if I can find one. Um, right, I'm leaning across camera. Right. It's just a paintbrush bit of water and what we'll do is we'll put some grass around the bottom so I just normally paint the bottom here I've moved my camera back a bit further tonight so you can see it so we're going to squeeze we're going to take the scriber like so and you've taken the grass off there press it against the sugar paste twist and pull away so this is now record speed grass <laughs> putting grass on it's very quick and it's very easy OK, so that is what you do. You literally use your scriber to go all the way round the bottom. It's very, very easy to do. OK, just add a bit more water. I've just got the water along the bottom here just to help it stick. You'll know when you've run out because there won't be any more grass coming out and you'll have to refill your tube. don't have to do it all exactly you can leave gaps gaps look better it's more slightly more natural okay you want to cover the bits you don't like though don't you that's the idea okay look at that how quick is that let's carry on let's go around the side now it's coming to the end. Can you see there that it's now down at the bottom then? So all I would do is just unscrew this end bit again and pull this back like so. Roll out some more green and then pop it into the tube. Oops, got some in there. Let's get rid of that and pop it into the tube again. Like so. 
push it down until you can see it come in there it is and then off we go again so just like so can you see okay well I'll push it back a tiny bit there we go so squeeze and you can make your grass as long or as short as you want then can't you by the amount that you decide to squeeze out down so I'll cover all my mistakes you see go all the way around here not too bad actually tonight I don't think I've coverage is fine I was dreading covering this live absolutely dreading it I was thinking oh what am I doing why have I set myself up for this <laughs> why did I do this to myself I'll tell you what I am going to do before I go too much further in a minute. I'm going to put the board ribbon on because once that house is on, I don't want to be spinning this around too much. I want it to settle overnight, you see. So I'm going to put some royal icing on. I think I've got an air bubble there. Oh no, that is it's not. I beg your pardon. It's a big lump of ganache. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move this forward a bit. There we go. So yeah, if you've got any gaps or anything like that, just pop it underneath, like so. Just keep filling it along. But yeah, you don't need it to all be in a row. It is nicer if you can leave a few gaps, I think. It does look a bit better. And then this is it, now back to the start. So just round the corner. Off you get. I'll squash that one. Let's put that one over the top. So you don't want to handle this. You want to let the scriber do all the work here. Keep your hands off it. Oh, do you know what? I haven't quite got enough. I can see it finishing. You little devil. Actually, I need more later anyway, so it doesn't really matter. There we go. Let's get to the end. That's it. Lovely. Right, let's turn that round like so. So we've put grass all around the bottom now anyway, but we're going to use the grass in different places later on um, just to kind of back up some other bits and pieces. But before I go too much further, I am just going to put some ribbon around the base to stop me having to spin it at the end because I don't want to be doing that. And I've got my ribbon and now I'm looking for my prick stick, which I can actually see as well, which is amazing. Thank goodness. And now I'm going to get told off by Maureen because I haven't got her unicorn scissors here that she gave me. So I need to get those out of my bag. They are still in my handbag. <laughs> I need to get them out so I can use those. Very nice pair of unicorn scissors. Everybody needs a pair of unicorn scissors, I think. All right, let's get my glue on. So just straightforward glue stick, whatever you got. I actually prefer Pritt stick. I don't know why. I just think it works better. People use double-sided sellotape and all sorts of things, but I think print stick's just as good. And we'll start at the back. I've got black ribbon tonight. So I'm just going to put that on the edge of the board. I know I'm off camera a little bit at the moment. You'll see it as it comes around the corner. So this is a 15 mil black ribbon. Okay, the reason I have to keep moving it backwards and forwards, it keeps hitting this part here, and that's where one of my cameras is suspended, you see, that's why I have to keep moving it. Because it's square, it's decided to keep catching. Yeah, it's caught it again. Right, scissors. And we'll cut them. Done. And then just put a bit of glue on the back. Just stick that down. Sorry, I'm still off camera a little bit. Right, that's the only bit we need to do. We've got that done now. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there so you can see. I'm hoping once I put the haunted house on, you're actually still going to be able to see what's going on. Um, let's make a little pathway, shall we? Um, I'm going to need that green. I don't want to get rid of that, so I'll stick that over there. Let's grab some satinara. And what we'll do is we'll dye this grey so a little bit of black actually what have I got 
Oh, I've got some black, that's good. Let's move camera for a second. You can have a nice little look at the board as well while we're at it, can't we? Um, so I just use a little bit of black, but I'm not 100% sure what's on the outside of this black because my hands are now covered in it. So let me give them a quick wash. Otherwise we could end up with, I don't know what. So what we'll do we'll give that a bit of a knead and just make that like a light grey colour. I've got green on my hands, I've got everything on me tonight. Again, we probably won't mix it through properly, we'll probably just leave it. Leave it like that, maybe, something like that. And then I only do paths in a couple of different ways, but we'll just do it a normal way tonight, I think. Let's move this over here a little bit because I haven't got any space for my long rolling pin. All we'll do is we'll just roll out a strip. As simple as that, don't really need to make it any more complicated than that. It's got all sort of, it's nice and grainy, looks pretty. Happy with that. Um, what do I need? I need a knife. Let me go and find one. Okay. A knife or a cutting wheel would be nice. Oh, there's a knife. That's good. Let's have that. So we'll just trim this down just so it's similar sort of sizing, I guess. take the top off there. I actually don't know how long it is in comparison to my cake. Oh, it's way too long. Well, that's okay. It doesn't matter. And then something like that. It doesn't have to be straight. In fact, definitely doesn't have to be straight. Let's pull that back a bit. Right. Let's take hold of some water. So my haunted house we're going to put roughly about there. So we'll have the path maybe sort of doing this. I've made a bit of a dent for a path, so we shall have a path. And we'll take it, what we'll do is we'll take it right to the top, because I don't know where I'm going to put the house yet. That's going to have to go on in a minute so we can tie the rest of it up. And we'll just kind of cut it down to about maybe about there just before the grass all oh, that fitted well god i couldn't have done that any better if i'd done it myself <laughs> let's press that down we'll flatten the path down so it looks like it's kind of it's not raised up too much just so it's kind of i don't know blended with the background <laughs> and then we'll add a bit of grass around it as well just so it looks a bit more part of the furniture i guess Just manipulate that bit at the top and get that far, can't we? That's okay. Right, where's that green? Have I merged that with that? Of course, I have just to confuse myself. Right, let's put in a little bit more. You could put a pattern on the path if you wanted to, if you want to make um, little stones or something, you could spend a bit of time doing that. So if you want to make cobbles, I guess you could do that. Going for the haunted tarmac look. <laughs> I still can't see my feed, you know, so I don't know what you're all saying. <laughs> I hope it's good. <laughs> it's nice anyway. <laughs> Dear, what an evening. Never mind. Okay. Oh dear. Right, let's pop that on the end again. So we'll put a bit of grass coming down here as well. There we go. A uh, little blob here and here. I don't know. We'll just put some down, shall we? Just see where it turns out. And my scriber, which of course I've moved. Oh no, I buried it there. That's fine. So 
push that down. There we go. So we'll start at the top and we'll just put a little bit of grass just down the side of the path here. Just press it down into the sugar paste with the scriber. Like so. Oops, that's coming off. That didn't work. There's probably no water there, that's probably why. there as well. Haunted grass obviously. <laughs> I'm not going to put any of the grass on anywhere else at the moment because I've got little characters to go on this which you'll see shortly and it will make more sense then. You're probably thinking what on earth is she doing but don't worry it will make more sense. This is meant to be um, trick-or-treating. I think that's how we're going to describe this. It's meant to be out trick-or-treating so you'll kind of get it in a minute when we put the rest of the stuff on. Right let's get the haunted house back. Now I'm going to get some royal icing. I'm going to have to give up with the witch I think for the moment because I think I'm going to be under time constraint otherwise that's not going to work. Even better, I've got more icing in a bag here. I couldn't have predicted that, could I? Okay, so I'm just going to put, I'll just move that over there a tiny bit on the bottom here. So on the bottom of the house, can you see it? <laughs> ah, just about there it is. On the bottom of the house, I'm just going to put some more icing. So I'm just literally going to zig across here backwards and forwards. I'll show you it on the camera. Oops, I'll show it on the camera in a second. Okay, see that? Good. Right, let's pop that up there on top of our... Oh, look at the green! It pulls out all the green on the windows. Right, I'm going to adjust my camera slightly so you can see this better. So I'm going to come on to screen in a minute. Well, I do camera adjustments. <laughs> I'll have to come on screen, otherwise it's like being at a fairground. Uh, let's see where we are. I want to give you a really good view tonight. That's not too bad. You're not going to get it all in, but not bad. There we go. Hopefully that will be a bit better for you. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Moving things around. There we go. Lovely. Look at that. I like that very much. Okay, let's put that there. Spooky house on top of hill. Kelly, if you don't approve of this, I won't believe you. <laughs> right, where's the water gone? I've just moved that. I was trying to be tidy. Water, there it is. Oh, all right. So we we'll take some more water. Now we're going to make sure the haunted house doesn't fall off. So although it's got royal icing on it here, I'm going to put a bit of grass around it. Make sure it's definitely not going to fall off. Now, although it's quite heavy, because it's quite because I've obviously made it quite heavy. Um, I don't think it needs a dowling rod in it to stop it sinking. Um, but if you made it solid, you may well need to do that because I think you probably will find that it may sink if it's solid. I have to say, if this was solid, you'd have a job to get through it. Um, <laughs> I think you'd be eating it for weeks. There we go. I love this. I love it. But we'll go around the back here. Unfortunately, you're going to see the bit where I messed up with the witch, but never mind. Nice big blob of icing on the back here coming up. Yeah, that's where my witch was stuck. <laughs> it may get stuck again, but I did paint both sides. You can see I painted both sides now. But I might try and attempt to stick my witch down again with something else, maybe chocolate. I would like to have had my witch flying over the top of my house. But it wasn't cooperating this afternoon. There we go, let's turn that round. Oh, lovely. Right, okay, so haunted house, Halloween. Let's get some customers. Let's get some trick-or-treaters. 
and some, some monsters obviously we've got both here so on my website i'm very into these as most people know um i like um printouts so we've got little halloween characters and what i've done there's nine on a sheet i've gone round i've cut them out and I have put them on some Saracino, a Saracino modelling paste, and I've made them stand up. So I put little cocktail sticks in the bottom. So if you are doing these and you put cocktail sticks in, please make sure that if you are uh, letting kids grab these off cakes, that you either tell them there's a cocktail stick in there or you don't put a cocktail stick in there at all so you don't have any issues there but there's all sorts of different ones there's like you know a little vampire lady here now in comparison to the size of the house they are quite big so they are not really life size for the house but that's okay they are approaching from all sorts of different areas so let's think about where we're going to put some so i made a little sort of ridge over here earlier so what we'll do is we'll put him there this little devil one there but they're lovely because they just kind of stand up and they're a bit of fun um we'll put him about there little characters i just think it's fun a uh, little one there i need to push that one in a bit now if i've got any little bits of cocktail stick at the bottom i'm just going to um just use my grass tool in a minute just to cover up anything i need to cover up We've actually got a green witch here, that's good, because the other one's been relegated. I'll pop you there. And we'll put one more over there, shall we? One more about there. So we have nine on a sheet. I think I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, because I used the others the other day. And then I have also got monsters on sheets. So these are my monsters. And again, I've done exactly the same. So we had these. Oh, no, I haven't had these on, on Sugar and Crumbs. They are um, a sheet of monsters. Oh, no, I've got some on the other side of the room. Let me run over and grab, get them. Um, what have I done with them? I had them on the other side of the room. That's what I should have said. Oh, no, here they are. So this is a monster sheet. So it works kind of similar to the pumpkin sheet that I had a few weeks ago. And all I've done is cut out some of these monsters. And again, I've backed them onto um, Saraceno. I've let them dry overnight. Popped little cocktail sticks in there like so. And then I just was going to use them to hide amongst the characters. I've just got to push that back a bit because I can see it coming outside. So I'm just going to pop them amongst everything else so let's put that seated there i guess okay oh we've got it all going on here haven't we look at that now let's go back and just put some grass on so where you've got anything that's showing just get hold of your grass tool and just pop a little bit around where they're standing so if you've got any mechanics i.e cocktail sticks we don't want to see those don't put too much water down there like me just use a little bit of grass just to hide kind of what's going on so if there's anything and actually then it helps you to kind of finish decorating the rest of the hill because you can see then where you are like so i'm still talking to myself you know i still don't know what you're all saying <laughs> I'll have to go back and read all the comments afterwards. Actually, I'm not going to put anything on that. Um, there we go. I'm not going to put anything on you because you're on a path, actually. You're not getting any grass, I've just decided. But you are. You've got a bit of red velvet cake on there. That's what that red is. Now, remember, these are photo images. So if you touch them you know, with water, then you will take the pattern off. So you do need to be a little bit careful there. So just don't go putting water actually on those characters. Close by is fine, but not on them. I've done that many a time. It's so annoying. Never done a cake like this before. Quite like it. Oh. The thing is, when we decide what lives we're going to do, we have to make it up and just hope that when we go live, it actually works. <laughs> it's called winging it. Uh, Carol's very good at it. She's very good at winging it. Okay, I'll put another bit of grass up there. <laughs> it's quite cool, actually. 
and then another little bit there okay now I've got some spiders as well so spider alert for anyone who's not into spiders look away for the moment um, but they are chocolate spiders so they are milk chocolate they're not very big they're like cupcake size actually so I always use this as a dimension for cupcakes so they go on top of cupcakes I've actually painted mine black so I've got a few here so I'm just going to put a few spiders on here and there I don't know where but we'll see when we put them on just in a few spaces maybe one on the side here and on the other side it's actually almost as big as the people so they're like Harry Potter spiders aren't they full-blown spiders <laughs> put one round the back there we go I'll turn that round so you can see that there there they are on the back there yeah oh we'll put actually put another one here look there we go put another one there basically stick them anywhere you want to hide something that's what I always say and I think I need to put a bit of glass there near enough there now if you wanted to I'm not actually gonna I was um, initially planning to paint this grass but do you know what because it matches the windows I'm not going to touch it I think that is exactly what it needs to be I don't think I need to do anything else with it I think that is enough I think there is more than enough on there for you to understand what this is so it's a haunted house special so we've got our house we've got our characters we've got a cake we've got a spooky board and in order for you to be able to see everything I'm going to have to take a photograph I'm going to push this back for a minute so you can see the bottom of the board there you go I know if I turn the camera around portrait mode you'll actually see it better but I'm not going to do that um, so that's the board from the other week gosh I need to push it off the back then um, <laughs> that's the board from the other week also uh, if I turn that there there's green here green green purple purple so it helps when you move colors around orange orange okay so when you're planning a cake just think about what colors you're using because it makes a huge amount of difference if you can cross reference these colors going all the way across the whole cake it does make a lot more sense we've got black spiders black windows black writing black ribbon so you can see how it all then comes together and then makes sense I'm not going to pick this one up. I'm telling you now, it's not happening. Um, <laughs> but I will take a lovely photograph and I will put it on Sugar and Crumbs and on my Instagram. And I will also put the whole video on YouTube. I will have to go home and read all the questions on the comments because I can't see a thing. Uh, so I don't know whether you've enjoyed this or not, but I'm assuming that you have. So there you go. Um, I'm going to take a photograph in a minute and have that ready um, to go on Instagram and um, sugar and crumbs you can have a little look so thank you very much for joining me I will be back next week on Tuesday at half past six I'm getting very close to launching my Christmas cake painting classes for the year um, so they are in progress at the moment there is three new ones now there will be four by tomorrow um, and then Royal Icing is also being filmed at the moment so there is a huge amount of filming going on at the minute so if you are interested in cake classes there you go tracymannkakeschool.co.uk go and have a look over there and have a look at all the classes I am exhausted I'm bright red <laughs> I need to go and have a lie down um, but I'm going to take a picture of this cake before I go home because otherwise um, it's going to be gone tomorrow morning I will have forgotten so I'm going to do that now so have a lovely evening I'm so sorry I haven't been able to directly comment this evening hopefully Kelly's done a job I still can't see anything coming through but anyway have a lovely evening and I will see you all next Tuesday at half past six take care bye